And, and we are live. Greetings, everybody. Welcome to the broadcast today, the Prophetic Edge. Now, we've got the Prophetic Edge TV program, which I believe will start May or June on God TV. But I've decided to add that language to the broadcast I do here on Facebook Live, the Prophetic Edge, because that's the reality. When we know what God is saying, we will always have that edge of victory. The key is hearing what he's saying and doing what he's saying. And today, I'm so honored, I'm privileged to have, I, I, I say a friend, but somebody who has spoken so significantly into my life and really into the lives of many in the body of Christ. Patricia King, a joy and an honor to have you on the program today. Oh, Larry, I just want to say right up front, uh, we so appreciate you and Destiny Image and all that you are doing to get the voice of the prophets out to the world and the message of the Lord. And you're doing such a great job. And I just want to encourage all the viewers today, please pray much for Christian media. And there's many yeah. different portals, of course, you know, internet like we're on right now, um, print media through books and, and blogs and that, but also TV. And that media mountain really needs um, to be um, uh, promoted in prayer and, and, and decreed the blessing of the Lord yes. over it because media uh, shapes the mindsets of people. So thank you, um, Larry, and your whole team for all that you're doing to, to boast on Jesus and to get his word out. Well, it's a joy. And, you know, the fun thing is you've got a show on God TV now, uh, yeah, Supernatural Life. It just started uh, this week as its launch. I mean, you know, as we're live right now, it's this week as its launch. Supernatural Life. Yes. So that's exciting. I just watched some of it on Facebook. I know I'm going to be joining you in May uh, to be on a program with you talking about yeah, Arise. I excited about that. So we'll be, we'll be shouting that one from the rooftops as well. An amazing, an amazing uh, program you've got there. I want to dive right on in because I'm sure folks are reading the little content around the video saying, okay, witchcraft in the church, what does this mean? Uh, Patricia, that is an unusual type of message for you to share. But like we were talking before we got going, um, I so appreciate it though, when people who give their lives to teaching on the realities of what does it mean to be a new creation in Christ, to prophesy the love of God. I mean, God loves you with an everlasting love. When you deliver a word like this, I pay attention. Sometimes it's like when it's all warning words and it's all negative, then it's like, okay, that prophet might need to do some sort of internal navigation with the Holy Spirit and get the Father's heart on stuff. But um, number one, this is obviously an urgent word. But number two, you deliver it with the tone of the Father. So would you just share for a couple minutes what provoked you to write a book on witchcraft in the church? Yeah. Thank you so much, Larry, for this opportunity for me to get this, this message out. Um, we always want to be righteousness conscious. We don't want to be sin conscious. Yeah. We want to be Jesus conscious, not devil conscious. But at the same time, Jesus gave warnings. He said, beware of wolves that come in sheep's clothing, and they come to try to deceive the flock. We see Paul mentioning it, Peter mentioning it. There are warnings in, in the Bible, um, even though um, the, the fullness of the word points to God, his goodness, um, his greatness, his ways. That's always what we want to stay focused on. We never want to be demon focused. Saying that, though, when you get a prophetic alert, I take it seriously, and it's never something I want to carry. I, I always wrestle with it uh, because my message is God loves you with an everlasting love. Yeah. But uh, the odd time, God will give me a warning word, and this is one. And that's why I wrote the book, Expose Witchcraft in the Church. And over a number of years, I'd say since about um, 19... Uh, 90, I would say, we started to, to experience ourselves as a ministry, uh, what we would call uh, sa satanic plants. And what I mean by that is uh, people who belong to a witchcraft coven or a satanic coven who are sent, literally sent by that coven mm -hmm. um, into Christian ministries to destroy. Jesus said the thief comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And so um, we uh, came into an awareness of what was going on. I was first introduced to that when I was in Africa back in 1981 uh, with Benson Hosa, where I actually met ex-Satanists and ex-witches who told their whole story of how the, the biggest assignments they had was to enter Christian churches and to target Christian leaders because they were told 
by their coven leaders that if they could bring down the pastor, if they could bring down the leader, they could bring down the flock. And they could destroy the message of the gospel in that city and infiltrate with more evil. So they told me the most horrific stories. And in Expos Witchcraft in the church, I do reveal some of those things. Some of them are shocking. They are shocking. But I think sometimes we have to be shocked because we feel that, well, we're in Western society. Those things might happen over in Africa or they might happen over in, you know, some dark place. But the, the, the truth is it happens everywhere. And it just takes on different form and fashion or, or ways that would be more acceptable to the culture, but it's everywhere. So we had an infiltration ourselves. This was over 10 years later from when I first got introduced to even the possibility of it. And the Lord gave us discernment. Wow. So because we had discernment, we were able to address the issue. So um, I won't go into the detail, but the details are in the book. We had three witches over a course of 12 years uh, that tried to attack our ministry. But because wow. of discernment, um, we were able to uh, walk in the light. We were able to extinguish every missile of the evil one. We were able to deal with the issues. But when I saw those witches intentionally go and and uh, try to get into other flocks. When I gave the warning to the pastors, the pastors laughed and they wow. didn't believe me. And every single one that did not believe the warning got taken out. They are actually no longer in their churches. Uh, a lot of the churches are no longer there. Their ministries are gone. And Jesus said, you will know them by their fruit. So yeah. this is not a light issue. This is I take this seriously when God starts giving me a warning for the body about the infiltration of witches. And uh, what happened is uh, about a year and a half ago, I uh, came under attack and I, I was getting attacked in my health. Almost every organ of my body came under attack. Wow. And I was uh, diagnosed with arthritis. I was diagnosed with a heart issue. I was diagnosed with hormonal issues. And I had no strength, no energy. And I had to every day just fight by faith to get through the day and to get my assignments done for the day because I had no strength within my health. Well, at the same time, our finances got attacked. Our finances never get attacked uh, because we uh, we know the word on it and we practice um, the principles of God's word. So we've always been uh, blessed in that. And the other thing that happened was uh, overnight, I had a very precious relationship come under severe attack. I'm wow. thinking, God, what is going on? And he said to me, you are being attacked by witchcraft. And he actually showed me the exact witch who was attacking me. And I said, God, a curse without cause cannot alight. Mm. And I watched over my heart with all diligence. So how can this attack get through? And uh, he showed me an area of trauma that took place in my life a number of years ago, actually. And I thought I dealt with it well, but there was, there was some offense that I had within my heart that I'd held on to. And he said, if you repent from that offense, and I didn't even realize it was an offense. I thought it was righteous indignation. Yeah, but he yeah. said, if, if you will repent from that, you can break the power of the witchcraft. So of course I did immediately and got that right with God. And then I commanded the witchcraft curse to be broken. Larry, within one month, every single symptom in my body diminished. All the wow. financial situation was rectified and, and, and flourishing after that. And overnight, the relationship came back into alignment. And, I, and, and the Lord spoke to me and he said, in this season, uh, witch covens, satanic covens are specifically targeting Christian leaders and churches, and they're going to try to infiltrate unawares. And wow. you must have discernment and blow a trumpet. Now, this is not to make everyone paranoid or to put everyone on a witch hunt. This yes. is simply to have a discernment and then to know that we have the victory. This is nothing. We are not to be afraid of witches. We are not yeah. to be suspicious of people. We are not to be paranoid that we're going to get cursed. But in this book, Exposed, Witchcraft in the Church, most of the book is about how to stand in the righteousness of God and utilize the weapons of warfare so that we penetrate the world with light, which expels the darkness. Yeah. And I believe the book will help people tremendously in overcoming in this hour. And also in the book, I have a prayer for witches that are reading the book because the Lord told me witches and Satanists are going to read this book. 
Yeah. And so I have a prayer for them and I spell it out to them. You are being used as a pawn in the devil's hands. And you can come to Jesus Christ right now. So I have a whole appeal for them within the book as well. And we're believing for a harvest of souls yes. uh, to come to the Lord out of the darkness of witchcraft. Witchcraft it was defeated 2000 years ago. Yes, it is. It's nothing we need to be afraid of, but we do need to make sure our hearts are aligned with God so that we're not being made a target. I think you literally answered every single question I was going to ask you about the book. <laughs> um, but you know what? Here's the good thing. As you were saying that, I wanted to pray into a few things because as you were talking about this, uh, just let me I just want to release a few things. Patricia, you share as well. I always love ministering with you. For those who are watching right now, I love the heart behind Patricia's material, particularly this book, because it is not, please hear me, it is not something that's creating fear. It's not something that, like she said, it's making you suspicious. Oh, is a witch after me? Is this going on? Nor is it something that should cause you to go into what I call unholy introspection in the sense of, oh, let me figure out every area possible where a witch might be cursing me. No, okay? But here's the thing. I believe it's going to provoke a prayer and a desire for the discerning of spirits. Patricia, that's something I don't hear the body talking about, even in our charismatic spirit empowered circles. I'm grateful for tongues and interpretation. I'm grateful for the prophetic. I'm grateful for healing and miracles. I just felt like the Lord wanted us to pray into discernment, true discernment for leaders and believers. Could you pray into that? You, you carry a real grace for that. Um, yeah. Cause that's the key. It's not introspection. Absolutely. It's not being suspicious. It is discernment that we need. Mm -hmm. So. And, and Larry, the discernment comes from the Spirit of God. The gift yes. of the discerning of spirits is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, the yes. Holy Spirit's authority is above every other authority. So when you're getting discernment, it should come with that sense of authority over anything that's not Christ-like. That gift of the discerning of spirits needs to be unlocked within the church. And, um, and, and it gives you discernment not only for evil spirits, yeah. But for when the spirit of God is operating, for when angelic spirits are operating, and for when the spirit of man is operating. But it comes from the Holy Spirit. So when it's 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 initiated in operation, you will always sense the authority of God's love, the authority of his truth as you're operating in it. It's not a fearful thing. It's an yeah. awesome thing. So, Father, in the name yeah, of Jesus, Lord. we just uh, release right now empowerment to unlock within your people's hearts the gift of the discerning of spirits yes. i just feel like saying too every believer has this gift it's in your spirit yeah. it's inherent in the holy spirit it just needs to be unlocked so we call it forth now into operation we unlock it in jesus name and we yeah. thank you lord for the enhancement of this gift of the discerning of spirits in every believer that's watching this primarily that they will discern the presence of god that they yes. will discern the presence of the operations of the spirit of god that they will yeah. discern angelic majesties yes. that they lord. will discern oh. the glory that you are releasing through your presence yes. and then when the darkness shows up, they will discern it. They'll be able to identify it, but it will be with knowing their authority, not out of fear, not out of giving it attention, but with full authority, Lord, yes. knowing that they have power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall injure them. Yes, Lord. And I even, feel, I just sense for some people who are watching, Patricia, you said something as you were praying that I think needed to just be restated in the sense that Every believer has access to this gift. I want to let you know, you might think to yourself as we were praying, as Patricia was praying, I know, but that's not my gift. We have taught sometimes the gifts of the Spirit erroneously in the sense that, well, that person has the gift of tongues or that person really has the prophetic right. gift. Now, and, and, and there are people that the Lord obviously uses in certain offices. And there are people, for whatever reason, in his sovereign choosing, that they operate more fluidly in certain gifts. I understand that. But I believe if the Holy Spirit lives inside of you, same Holy Spirit inside of Jesus, same Holy Spirit, obviously Paul was talking about 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, that Holy Spirit gives you access to the discerning of spirit. So I just wanted to come against that, this idea that, well, you know, that's not for me or I don't operate in that. Well, it is possible. And Patricia, the key, I mean, right at 1 Corinthians 14, uh, verse 1, Paul says, earnestly yeah, desire. Yeah, earnestly desire them. <laughs> yes. It's legal. It is legal for you to actually earnestly desire Absolutely. that gift. So, yeah. and, and, and when we get born again, Larry, um, Jesus in the flesh doesn't come into our heart. That's true. We, we invite Jesus to come into our heart, but it's the spirit of Jesus Christ that comes into our heart. So yes. inherent in the Holy Spirit 
are the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So we're carrying around these gifts within our spiritual nature, but we have to unlock them. That's what the baptism with the Holy Spirit is for, to get completely immersed yeah. in our soul and our body, and oh, then yeah. to, by faith, unlock those gifts. Uh, Paul told Timothy, work out your salvation with fear and trembling. You can't work out what you don't already have in. Mm. So we have to, first of all, understand that we already have it within us. And yeah. then uh, G Jesus said, out of your innermost belly, speaking of your spirit man, will flow rivers of living water. And it yeah. says, this spake he of the spirit. Yes. And yeah, so I didn't believe as you're talking about this, Patricia, it's funny, as we're, as we're talking about these, and obviously we're going to go right back into our topic. I sense the Holy Spirit bringing clarity to people. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes we pray or sing songs, and I love these prayers and the songs, but we're acting like the Holy Spirit has yet to come or he's mm -hmm. coming out of heaven again. And there's only one man who's going to come out of heaven. That's Jesus. Amen. Um, the Holy Spirit has already been deposited in you. Amen. And I believe what happens is through the baptism of the Spirit, through a life of being filled with the Spirit, we experience greater dimensions of his operation in our lives. So, yeah, as you were sharing that, I just feel like even now as you're watching and listening, listen, if the Holy Spirit just, just starts to come upon you, um, I, I feel it. Uh, you, I feel you, it too. You, have, you have license to tune out and you can tune back in later. Um, God is doing this because this is the key. Amen. This is why I love Patricia. And this is why I have no qualms at all talking about a message like this is because at the end of the day, I believe what Patricia is doing through this book is arming you to be on the offensive. I do not want, listen, spiritual warfare is not, it is not cleaning up the messes made by the devil all the time. Spiritual warfare, I believe, is a victorious body of Christ advancing forward. I believe in shifting atmospheres, but it's time for us to start setting atmospheres. Um, so, Patricia, let me, let me ask you this, because as we talk a little bit more about witchcraft in the church, I think, I, I think we need to change the way we think when we hear the word witchcraft, because some people are thinking, you know, okay, is this like Andorra in the show Bewitched? Is it people flying around on brooms? And and, and there's obviously a part of it where there is that real mystical element of it with yeah. Wiccan and that type of thing. But going through your book and um, having heard you talk about this, I, I believe I believe witchcraft comes down to a very base thing in terms of rebellion. Yeah. And so Larry, we, in the book, we, uh, we outline some of the ways that we do see uh, witchcraft operating in the church, you know, and, and rebellion. It says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. It equals it. So anytime that we're in rebellion to the Lord or rebellion, you know, against our uh, leaders in the church, um, we are opening ourselves up to uh, be used by witchcraft, to be filled with the essence of that spirit and to be attacked by it. And so we don't want to give place to the enemy in that way. We also talk about the Jezebel spirit that we read yeah. about in the Bible, which, of course, is full of control, manipulation, seduction, and that. So uh, we see it even in believers. And in, in prayer meetings, sometimes you'll see even witchcraft manifest through, through really good-hearted people, but, but, but they're a little bit deceived. They don't understand. Yeah. And I think maybe it's possible that every Christian has at some point operated in this thinking that they were doing God a service. Oh. I remember uh, myself as a new believer, I didn't understand the way that you could curse through your prayers, right? And um, there was a particular stream of Christianity rising up at the time that my leaders told me, uh, this is demonic, this is that, this is the other. So I was praying in my prayer time, oh Lord, take this man of God out, take this, this, oh this guy out, he's <laughs> deceiving the people. But that kind of prayer is a witchcraft prayer. You're cursing instead of blessing. So anytime that you curse instead of bless, yes. um, you are being vulnerable to that spirit. You're being open to it. And, wow. um, so um, in the book, we, we touch on that and uh, give people some insight so that we can steer away. And Larry, we're, we're in a season right now where a spirit of deception, I mean, I mean, we see it in the, the, the world like even we know that there's a counterfeit for everything that god no. does yeah. you have been a great advocate for example for women because you've seen prophetically that god is pouring out a spirit upon male and female in this hour and it's time for women to rise up and take their place and your book arise it's you know I, I love it people are loving that book it's such a prophetic edge on it and people are 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 finding their place in the body because of it both male and female that uh, read Thank that god. book but um but 
um, in, in that, we know that there's a counterfeit uprising as well. And we saw that even in, in America yeah. with the State of the Union address when the president of the United States was making an appeal to the lawmakers to pass laws that would support the life of the unborn and women who were dressed in white in that particular time, so they showed out, show, showed up really clear, yeah. were crossing their arms, rolling their eyeballs. There, there was so much disdain and anger. And I'm thinking, Lord, they, they are probably beautiful people, good people, but they're deceived and yeah. they don't understand the truth. And it's our job is to get that truth and to speak the truth in love, but to pray for that deception to yes. lift off of them. We see deception in the area of late term abortions on the plate right now. We see it in the area of gender confusion, of homosexual uh, lifestyle, of same sex marriage, uh, the whole marijuana legalization. We see so much deception in the world. And if we're not discerning of that deception, we'll buy into it. And yeah. unfortunately, many Christians are buying into the deception and then, of course, get controlled through their thinking to do things that are ungodly. Yeah, it's interesting. Even as you're as you're mentioning that whole situation, and I remember watching the State of the Union address and thinking to myself, and I had to watch my heart because you're watching this scenario played out in front of you and you're seeing all these women obviously yeah. dressed in white sitting there and Part of me was tempted to get mad, but the Lord continues to remind me, don't get mad at the people. Like, right. I want to encourage those of you who are watching, like, yeah. it's, it's easy for us to think we're at a war against flesh, but we are not. Paul made it very clear, and we need to know this as more than a Bible memory verse. Like, we are actually warring against spiritual forces. So when you see a situation like this, even as we read the news, I mean, isn't it interesting? We scroll every day through our news feeds and we see so many things where obviously there is diabolical, demonic deception at work. We need to pray. We don't need to be angry with the people, although there is, I guess there is a righteous indignation that certain yeah. things produce. But we need to say, Holy Spirit, give us discernment on actually how to pray effectively. And that's what I love about your book, Patricia. You have all of these great warfare strategies, like victory strategies. I, I love the language you even use because folks, again, spiritual warfare in the 80s and 90s, I am so grateful for so many of those generals. And sadly, you had some things get a little goofy. And as a result, though, we've thrown spiritual warfare under the bus. I do believe that the Lord is bringing us back to a lot of those principles, and he's reminding us of things that we can do in order to be victorious. And yeah. Patricia, what I mean, I've got a few minutes left. What are a few of the things that you arm people with, even if you just provide the concepts in this book that are victory strategies against this stuff? Well, Larry, one of the, the, the biggest strategies is the power of righteousness. Mm. Now we, we know that we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So when we focus on that new creation reality, that we are righteous, we are pure, we've been perfected in Christ. When we get hold of that, that truth becomes a fire around us and glory in the midst of us. Mm. So I always teach people, watch over your heart with all diligence. So um, obviously we're not going to be sin conscious, but when you're righteousness conscious, and the devil comes to tempt you, it's like a foreign substance has just entered your mind, right? Because you yeah. are so focused on righteousness. But um, the uh, scripture uh, uh, teaches uh, us, even through Jesus' own words, he said, the prince of this world is coming, but he has nothing in me. Mm. So the question I have to ask myself, and the question we should ask ourselves as believers, is if the prince of this world were to come today, does he have anything in me? Mm. And uh, we're taught in the Lord's Prayer, you know, to bring our heart before the Lord. For, uh, for, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive others who trespass against us, right? Keeping that slate clean. And so that is one of the most powerful weapons that we have is the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And then to also know that we are light and that light expels darkness. Yes. So we, we want to walk free from fear, knowing that we're on the offense, always on the offense, yes. not on the defense, right? Um, the other thing that, that um, you know, I love, and of course, uh, one of your authors, Robert Henderson, so beautifully uh, pens and teaches on, is on on 
third heaven perspective. Yeah. When, when we know that we are seated in heavenly places in Christ and fighting our warfare from that place. But there are many weapons that God shows us. Uh, we go into the book about the full armor of God, how to appropriate that armor so that you are not attacked, how to move forward in that, uh, how to use specific tools specific weapons that God gives you. And so we write about that within the book so that we can equip. This yeah. book, however, um, I just want to cl clarify, is not actually um, primarily a teaching book about discerning witchcraft or yeah. about how to implement spiritual warfare. It is a prophetic alert. So there's yeah. a prophetic life within it that when it's imparted, will help help the believer know the way that they should go. But there are definitely teaching elements in it. And that's interesting because that, when I explained the book Arise that we did together, that was more, it's not necessarily a teaching book, but there are sometimes books that we release. And, you know, this is what we've done, Destiny Image, for since 1983. Right. Sometimes that there is a message, it is not a teaching, but it is something Perfect. that God is alerting his people to. Mm -hmm. Not always a warning, but an alert is saying, hey, Heaven has something right now to say about this, and it's being released. So that was a good good clarification, Patricia. Although, that's what I love about it. In the context of the alert, in the context of the message, there are some great victory strategies and tools that I believe are going to be a blessing to you. Also, I would just go and check out Patricia's wide library of all sorts of content, because you did a great book club on this book. And I know some of that's on YouTube. Um it's just, th this is timely material that we need to know right now. And, you know, it's interesting. My friend, his name is Kyle Winkler. He has a book called Silent Satan. And he really approaches spiritual warfare, very similar to you, Patricia, in the sense of very focused on our righteousness in Christ. And, you know, we often call it the armor of God. He, he felt like the Holy Spirit gave him this language, the uniform of the righteous for the <laughs> armor of God. And we just want to, as we kind of finish up this broadcast, just to give you a very, a little taste of this, that's what we wanted to do. I want us to pray into that. I, I really, as you were talking about the power of righteousness, um, the fact that folks, those of you who are watching, you're in right standing with God. You are in right because of the blood of Jesus. When we inundate ourselves with these realities, new creation realities, realities of our identity in Christ, I believe that equips us with every resource and weapon we need to do exactly what Patricia said, to be on the offense against every scheme of the enemy. Um, so Patricia, as we, well, a couple of things, I encourage you to get witchcraft in the church, exposed witchcraft in the church. I know it's available on Amazon. If you go to XP Media, if you go to Patricia King's website, I just encourage you to get it because it is a timely needed resource right now. And I would say, Patricia, if you're cool with just a few minutes of praying into this, we can go there. Absolutely. I, actually, also, Larry, I'm just getting a, um, a word yeah. of knowledge for a pastor who's watching right yeah. now. And uh, you are being quickened right now by this message. And a whole bunch of things are coming into your mind. It's like mm. puzzle pieces coming into your mind right now where you're thinking, oh, my gosh, I think this situation, this person and that. Um, and you're starting to connect the dots. But I see the Lord giving you insight and discernment. And yeah. and I see this general, this call uh, 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 rising up into to functioning as a general in this hour in the area mm of authority kingdom authority it's kingdom authority and so i just bless you with that in the name of jesus but i love this whole thing about um operating our life out of who we already are yeah believers when you receive jesus christ as your savior jesus said to nicodemus that which is born of the flesh is flesh that which is born of the spirit is spirit in your spirit man you have a miracle that took place you are a brand new creation all mm. things have passed away all things have become new you have the power the righteousness the purity yeah. the wisdom the gifts everything that god is you have within you in that new creation and the Lord says, let it out. Start mm. to live that life. The righteous lives by faith. We live out that life by faith. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and declare over you a releasing of that oh. glorious life of Jesus Christ in this hour where you will shine as a light. It is time to rise and shine yes. because your light has come. And darkness cannot 
extinguish light, but light will extinguish darkness. And yeah. I see an increase of glory. I see an increase of those who are going to be clothed in the armor, the uniform of <laughs> God, because you are kingdom warriors, because you yeah. are our kingdom generals that are going forward to advance the kingdom. And the Lord says, um, the kingdom suffers violence and the violent take it by force. And that this, this, this new holy, holy violence. Um, and, you know, I'm not talking about a worldly violence. I'm talking about yeah. passion for the kingdom of God coming forth from you that will not turn back until the victory is secured. I release that upon you in the name of Jesus. I also break any curse that might be yeah. upon anyone right now. I break the power of curse in the name of Jesus Christ yes. and release you from the strategies of the enemy against you and the work that you've been assigned to in Jesus name. Yeah, and I pray specifically for some folks right now. It's almost like this is interesting. Books like this, like books that contain purity like this, for whatever reason in the past, you have not engaged them out of fear. And there's not a spirit of fear on this. There, there's, I, I just feel like the Lord wants to break a spirit of fear off of you. Um, and again, there's no condemnation or shame in that. But the reality is messages like this, it's almost like when they pop up, it's like, I don't, I don't want to listen to that because I, I don't want to get fearful. I don't want to get whatever, but I feel like the Lord wants to break. In fact, he's breaking that off right now. Even with the announcement of that, the Lord says, if that's you, just receive it because he's breaking that off because he wants you to be on the offense. He is saying, again, don't go into this kind of holy search, this this introspection where you're like, I got to find every issue with me. I got to find every problem. I got No, Holy Spirit is the one who convicts us. And when he convicts us, there's a, dif there's a difference between condemnation and conviction. Amen. Condemnation Amen. makes you feel powerless because you are being completely overwhelmed by, oh, I didn't do this. I did this wrong. But conviction reminds you that the power of the Holy Spirit is inside of you to give you all the ability and all the anointing and enabling you need to have victory. So, Father, I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord, that you are resourcing your people right now. You're using this resource and others like it to actually position the body of Christ to be on the offense so we can advance. And the last thing I declare is I'm grateful that we've been shifting atmospheres. But, Lord, may each of the people who are watching, whatever sphere you're called to, whether you're a lawyer, a doctor, a homeschool parent, wherever you're called, I believe the Lord wants you to desire to actually ascend in that place to be a leader, to be a thought leader, to be to be an influencer. Do you know why? Because I believe he wants environments, he wants entire spheres of culture that are set by the atmosphere of the presence of God. We've been doing a lot of shifting. We've been doing a lot of displacing of the enemy, pushing him out. But would it be that the body of Christ would rise to a place, like Patricia was saying, not where we're violently overthrowing things or doing that kind of thing, but we are in places of influence where you and I, people under the influence of the Holy Spirit, are the ones who have influence. And we can create these greenhouses where it becomes easy. I feel like the Lord is saying that's the end result of the seven mountain message is when leaders, be believers under the influence of the Spirit are in high places. Guess what? He creates these greenhouse effects where it is actually easier for people in that jurisdiction to come and know the Lord. Because ultimately it is about reconciliation between God and and man, the whole creation is groaning and waiting for you, waiting for people filled with the spirit to be released. So anyway, had to share that. That was opening That's up. So so. Awesome. Hey, Larry, I'm getting a word for you right oh, now um, about be. your program, Prophetic Edge with God TV. Yeah, I see the favor of the Lord upon the program and upon you in it. And I'm very oh. excited about the message of the Lord that is going to come through that program oh, and, and, and be planted in the nations of the world. So, mm. so God bless you. Favor is going to increase oh. upon your life in that season uh, so you. that the message can even spread further than it's ever gone. I receive it. And it's, it's wonderful, Patricia, partnering with people like yourself, because I mean, you've been so encouraging and empowering to myself, so many of my colleagues and friends. And our heart, likewise, to do whatever we can to get the messages Holy Spirit's giving you. We want to get them out to the nations. So that's true. That's true kingdom family, true kingdom that's partners. Right. We are true kingdom family. We bless each other. We love each other. Love. It's awesome. Oh, boy. Well, anyway, I would encourage you guys again. It's ex The book is called Exposed Witchcraft in the Church. We're going to have this out to our Destiny Image community as well. Because, again, this is one of those things where I believe it is an urgent message that we need to be aware of. 
not so we can be fearful and all that kind of stuff, so we can advance, we can arise and we can advance and operate in discernment. Not looking for demons and evil stuff, but looking for the, I feel like I just want to prophesy that you begin looking for the movement of the Holy Spirit. You are looking actively for what he is doing in Jesus' name. Thank you so much, Patricia. I appreciate you being on the program. And for all of our friends who are watching, thank you guys. Look forward to talking to you again soon.